As former professional cyclists, we've probably spent more time wearing Lycra than Bear's thinking about. Yep, and although the tight cycling shorts and the tight jersey and all the other tight cycling kit might be appropriate for longer training rides, sometimes Lycra is just not the answer. No, not for city cycling. You might be cruising gently, you might not be traveling far, or perhaps more to the point, you might have to look half decent when you get to your destination and actually not have anywhere to get changed. So let's go and take a look at some of the clothing options available to you for city cycling. Cycling is a great way to get around the city. It's often faster than driving, you take up less space on the road, and of course, it doesn't pollute at all. Cycling is more flexible than public transport, and it's healthier because it's exercise, and we could all use a little more of that, couldn't we? When cycling in a city, some of us might not want to look like a pro. We might not want to walk around the supermarket wearing Lycra on the way home. In fact, most of us probably just want to get to our destinations feeling comfortable, relaxed and safe. Now, if you're just cruising to work on a city bike, then you're not training. And if you're doing it to save time, then you don't want to have to have a shower and get changed when you get to work. You need to be able to transition seamlessly from bike to office and back to bike again. So you want your outfit to be functional and durable, but also aesthetic. Now safety has got to be the most important thing because cities are full of motor vehicles as well as people and interactions with cars can be scary and even downright dangerous for cyclists. Now, luckily not often, but it is one of the most cited reasons why people don't want to cycle in the city because they're scared of the cars. So be seen to be safe. So you can either do that with lights or you can go for bright reflective colors in your clothing. For example, fluoro socks, fluoro overshoes, fluoro gilet, bright colors are more easily seen. And research shows that the best place to put bright colors, reflective things and lights to be seen is on moving parts of your body. For example, knees and ankles. Shoes. Now, if you want to use clip-in pedals, you want to look for mountain bike varieties. So you have to wear mountain bike shoes then, meaning that you can actually get off and walk with your bike should you need to. However, if you're using normal pedals like these, well, you can go wild. The only thing that you might want to bear in mind is that open toes, so sandals or flip-flops, can be a little bit risky. If you're unlucky enough to take a tumble, or even if you stay on your bike and just scuff your toes, if you actually get grazed feet, well, it's really painful, not to mention quite frustrating waiting for them to heal up so you can actually wear your normal shoes again. Although that said, many of us take that risk. And then there's durability. Don't wear your best frock or your best suit, especially not if it's made of a fragile fabric. Also, probably best to avoid anything that needs to be hand washed as you're just going to be creating a huge amount of work for yourself. And finally, white clothing. I just really wouldn't do it because the streets and the bikes, they get pretty grubby. And if you're close to them all the time, it's not long until your white clothes end up that way too. Comfort. Even cycling gently means that you're gonna be sat on your bum and pedaling. So clothes that are too tight or too baggy, too hot or too cold, well, they're just not gonna be ideal, are they? So we have some top tips for you. Your trousers should be loose enough or stretchy enough to allow you to actually pedal in comfortable and most importantly perhaps swing your leg over the bike and then the only other thing to bear in mind is your right trouser leg now you either use a clip to keep it tight or you roll it up meaning that you don't get it in the way of your chain although in this case of course in the absence of a chain i don't need to worry about it shorts are the perfect solution in my opinion whether you go for the lycra option or baggies basically there's always room to move they preserve your modesty and they don't get caught in the drivetrain. Surprisingly, the right kind of skirt can be an excellent outfit for cycling. Short or tight skirts, maybe not, because they are uncomfy and revealing. But a wider skirt can allow loads of room for pedaling. And actually, what you can do is tuck the back hem up into the front waistband to preserve your dignity. True Scotsmen, please also take note. For a really, really long flowing skirt, you should definitely tuck it up out of the way because it could be dangerous if you catch it in the back wheel or the brakes. Next up is your underwear. It's obviously quite an important subject as it is the layer of clothing that's right next to your skin. So you want to find something that's comfortable, it doesn't crumple up or chafe. And one top tip is you can even get underwear that has a built-in chamois, much like your normal cycling shorts. So if that's the sort of thing that appeals to you, why don't you check those out? When you're cycling, you're out in the elements and that's one of the great things about it. But it also presents challenges. It's important to adapt your clothing appropriately. Yeah, in hot weather, it's best just to wear a t-shirt and swap into your office shirt or blouse when you get there. It's 
almost impossible to avoid sweating when it's hot, and you're likely to crumple your clothing underneath your backpack. So save them until you get to work. Yep, and when it comes to cold weather, well, there are some great cycling jackets out there that are both quite stylish and also wind and water resistant. Ugh, rain is the bane of every city commuter. Now weighing up all the options, possibly the best thing to go for is full length waterproof trousers to protect yourself. Alternatively, you can just accept that your legs and feet are gonna get soaked and just take some spare trousers and shoes for the office. Now on your upper half, cycling waterproof these days can be very sleek and aesthetic. Or you could go for the poncho, which is maybe not such a good look, but it does protect more of you from the water. A special note to gentlemen here. Please, please wear your trouser waistband high or use a belt because otherwise you might end up with a builder's bum and honestly, nobody wants to see that. Sorry. They're not. No, they don't. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Sorry. A special note to the ladies as well. You might want to consider a high necked t-shirt or a top because some people do want to see that and you might be fine showing it off, but it is a risk for wasps and bees. And believe me, speaking from experience, that is not a fun encounter. Well, let's hope that this video helps you to feel comfortable, but also cool when riding in the city, whether you're a cyclist who never stops being a cyclist, even off the bike, or someone who rides a bike, but does not want to look like a cyclist. Comfortable and cool. There we go. Now, if you would like to watch another video about city cycling here on GCN, there's one that you can click through just down there where we give you our top tips. Make sure you check it out.